So you've summoned a demon. Well done. But now you've got one, you're going to have to be very, very clever to deal with it. Convergent Series by Larry Niven. Read by Carl Wallace. It was a girl in my anthropology class that got me interested in magic. Her name was Anne. She called herself a white witch, though I never saw her work an effective spell. She lost interest in me and married somebody, at which point I lost interest in her. But by that time, magic had become the subject of my thesis in anthropology. I couldn't quit, wouldn't if I could. Magic fascinated me. The thesis was due in a month. I had a hundred pages of notes on medie medieval, primitive, oriental, and modern magic. Modern magic meaning psionic devices and such. Did you know that certain African tribes don't believe in natural death? To them, every death is due to witchcraft. In every case, the witch must be found and killed. Some of these tribes are actually dying out due to the number of witchcraft trials and executions. Medieval Europe was just as bad in many ways, but they stopped in time. I tried several ways of conquering Tristan and other demons, purely in the spirit of research, and I put a Taoist curse on Professor Pauling. It hadn't worked. Mrs. Miller was letting me use the apartment house basement for experiments. Notes I had, but somehow the thesis wouldn't move. I knew why. For all I'd learned, I had nothing original to say about anything. Wouldn't have stopped anyone. Remember the guy who counted every I in Rumus and Crusoe? But it stopped me. Until one Thursday night. I get the damnest ideas in bars. This one was a beaut. The bartender got my untouched drink as a tip. Went straight home and typed for four solid hours. It was ten minutes to twelve when I quit, but I now had a complete outline for my thesis, based on a generally new idea in Christian witchcraft. All I needed was a hook to hang my knowledge on. I stood up and stretched. I knew I'd have to try it out. All my equipment was in Mrs. Miller's basement, most of it already set up. I left the pentagram on the floor two nights ago. I erased that with a wet rag, a former washcloth, wrapped around a wooden block. Robes, special candles, list of spells, the new pentagram. I worked quietly so as not to wake anyone. Mrs. Miller was sympathetic. Her sense of humor was such that they had burnt her three centuries ago. But the other residents needed their sleep. I started the incantations exactly at midnight. At fourteen past, I got the shock of my own life. Suddenly, there was a demon spread eagle in the pentagram with his hands and feet and head occupying all five points of the figure. I turned and ran. He roared, Come back here. I stopped halfway up the stairs, turned, and came back down. To leave a demon trapped in the basement of Mrs. Miller's apartment house was out of the question. With that amplified uh, basso profundo voice, he'd have wakened the whole block. He watched me come slowly down the stairs. Except for the horns, he might have been a nude middle-aged man, shaved and painted bright red. But if he'd been human, you wouldn't have wanted to know him. He seemed built for all the seven deadly sins. Avaricious green eyes. Enormous gluttonous tank of a belly, muscles soft and drooping from sloth, a dissipated face that seemed permanently angry, lecherous, never mind. His horns were small and sharp and polished to a glow. Wait till I reached bottom. That's better. Now what kept you? It's been a good century since anyone called up a demon. He'd forgotten how, I told him. Nowadays everyone thinks I'm supposed to, to draw the pentagram on the floor. The floor? They expect me to show up lying on my back? His voice was thick with rage. I shivered. My, my bright idea. Pentagram was a prison for demons. Why? I thought of the five points of a pentagram. The five points of a spread eagled man. Well? I know. Doesn't make sense. Would you go away now, please? He stared. You have forgotten a lot. Slowly and patiently, as to a child, he began to explain the implications of calling up a demon. I listened. Fear and sick hopelessness rose in me until the concrete walls seemed to blur. I am in peril of my mortal soul. This was something I never considered, except uh, academically. Now it was worse than that. To hear the demon talk, my soul was already lost. Been lost from the moment I used the correct spell. I tried to hide my fear, but that was hopeless. With these enormous nostrils, he must have smelled it. He finished and grinned as if inviting comment. I said, Let's go over that again. I only get one wish. Right. If you don't like the wish, I get to choose another. Right. It doesn't seem fair. 
who say anything about fair or traditional. Why hasn't anyone heard about this deal before? This is the standard deal, Jack. You used to give a better deal to some of the marks. The others didn't have time to talk because of that 24-hour clause. If there weren't anything down, we'd alter it. We have power of written things that mention this. That 24-hour clause. I haven't taken my wish in 24 hours. You'll give the pentagram and take my soul anyway. That's right. If I do use the wish, you have to wait in the pentagram until my wish is granted or until 24 hours are up. Then you teleport to hell to report same. Come back for me immediately, reappearing in the pentagram. I guess teleport's a good word. I vanish and reappear. Are you getting bright ideas? Like what? I'm making it easy on you. If you erase the pentagram, I can appear anywhere. You can erase it and draw it again somewhere else, and I've got to appear inside it. A question hovered on my tongue. I swallowed it and asked another. Suppose I wished for immortality. You'd be immortal for what's left of for 24 hours. He grinned. His teeth were coal black. Better hurry. Time's running out. Time, I thought. Okay, all or nothing. Here's my wish. Stop time from passing outside of me. Easy enough. Look at your watch. It was a red mark opposite the minute hand of my Rolex, and a black mark opposite the hour hand. The demon was still there when I looked up, still spread eagle against the wall, still wearing that knowing grin. I moved around him, waved my hand before his face. When I touched him, he felt like marble. Time had stopped, but the demon had remained. I felt sick with relief. The second hand of my watch was still moving. I expected nothing less. Time had stopped for me, for 24 hours of interior time. If it had been exterior time, I'd have been safe, but of course that was too easy. Thought my way into this mess, should be able to think my way out, shouldn't I? I raised the pentagram for the wall, scrubbing until every trace was gone. Then I drew a new one, using a flexible metal tape to get the lines as straight as possible, make as large as I could in the confined space. It was still only two, two feet across. I left the basement. I knew where the nearby churches were, though I hadn't been in one in too long. My car wouldn't start. Neither would my roommate's motorcycle. The spell which enclosed me wasn't big enough. I watched to, a, watched to a Mormon temple three blocks away. The night was cool and balmy and lovely. City lights blinked out the stars, but there was a fine werewolf's moon hanging way above the empty lot where the Mormon temple should have been. I watched another eight blocks to find the synagogue and the Old Saints Church. All I got out of it was exercise. I found empty lots. For me, places of worship didn't exist. I prayed. Didn't believe it would work, but I prayed. If it wasn't heard, was it because I didn't expect it to be? I was beginning to feel that the demon was out of everything long ago. What I did with the rest of that long night isn't important. Even to me, it didn't feel important. 24 hours against eternity? I wrote a fast outline of my experiment in demon raising, and then tore it up. The demons would only change it. Which meant that my thesis was shot to hell, whatever happened. I carried a real but rigid Scott Terrier into Professor Pauling's room and closed on his desk. The old tyrant would get a surprise when he looked up. But I spent most of the night outside, walking, looking my last on the world. Once I reached into a police car and flipped the siren on, thought about it and flipped it off again. Twice I dropped in the restaurant and ate someone's order, giving money which I wouldn't need. Print because the notes would read, The Shadow of Strikes. The hour hand had circled my watch twice. I got back to the basement at 12.10, with a long hand five minutes from midnight. The hand seemed painted to my face as I waited. My candles had left a peculiar odor in the basement, an odor overlaid with the stink of demon and the stink of fear. The demon hovered against the wall. No longer in a pentagram, trapped halfway through a wide-eyed leap of triumph. Had an awful thought. Why did I believe the demon? Everything he'd said might have been a lie. And it probably was. I'd been tricked in accepting a gift from the devil. I stood up, thinking furiously. I'd already accepted the gift, but... The demon glanced to the side and grinned wire when he saw the trop lines were gone. He nodded at me, he said, back in the flash, and was gone. I waited. I thought my way into this, but a cheery bass voice spoke out of the air. I knew you'd, you'd move the pentagram. You made it too small for me, didn't you? Tisk tisk. Couldn't you guess I changed my size? There were rustlings and shimmering in the air. It was there somewhere. I can feel it. Ah. He was back, spread a little before me, two feet tall and three feet off the ground. 
His black nolo grin disappeared when he saw the pentagram wasn't there. Then, he was seven inches tall, eyes bug-eyed in surprise, yelling in a contralto voice, Where in the hell is that? He was two inches of bright red uh, toy soldier. Pentagram! He squealed. I won. Tomorrow I'd get to a church. Necessary to have somebody leave me in blindfold. It was a small red star. Buzzing red house fly. Gone. Saw it, how quickly you can get religion. Tell, have what? Demon tell you you're damned? Could I really get into a church? Somehow I'm sure I'd make it. You gotten this far. I'd outthought a demon. Eventually he looked down to see the pentagram. Part of it was a plain sight. But it wouldn't help him. Spread eagle like that, he couldn't reach it to wipe it away. He was trapped for eternity, shrinking towards the in, in, infinitesimal but doomed never to reach it. Forever trying to appear inside a pentagram was forever too small. I had drawn it on his bulging belly. The End